Hello YouTube. What I have here is a Dell Dimension 4550 running a Pentium 4 at 2.4 GHz. Windows XP has been running on this machine for 11 years, but since Windows XP is no longer, no longer going to be supported as of April 2014, I needed to find a viable alternative operating system for the unit. Considering it's so old, uh, my only options would have either been switched to a free operating system or uh, use an illegitimate copy of Windows because it's just not worth uh, purchasing a Windows license for a computer this old. So if you are like me and you have a fully functioning 10 plus year old computer, I uh, suggest you try uh, Linux Mint. This is the third variant of the Linux operating system. I tried for uh, this computer. I tried Ubuntu first, and that was as slow as Christmas. I tried Linux Mint using the Cinnamon desktop environment, and that was also very, very slow. Um, the reason I'm switching is because of the fact that no security updates will be released for XP as of April 2012. So I highly recommend anybody with a uh, uh, an old 10 plus year old Dell computer they, they consider, or any computer for that matter, any Pentium 4 class system, uh, unless it's an extreme addition with hyper threading, I, I suggest you, you consider switching to... Uh, uh, Linux Mint. Uh, it runs fairly well. It doesn't hog resources. Uh, Skype. They have Skype for it. They have a number of modern programs. They have productivity software that comes uh, built in uh, to this uh, operating system, such as an Excel clone. It's a uh, I don't know how to pronounce it exactly. It's a LibreOffice, LibreOffice. I don't know. It seems to be some kind of variant of Apache OpenOffice. It also runs well. I mean, it looks like the classic Office 2003 software, and it is compatible with Office 2003. Um, let me see if I can show you the uh, monitor here. As far as performance, it's running just fine. Uh, considering the system is so old, it's a Pentium 4 2.4 GHz with 1 gig of memory. It's handling itself very well with the operating system in Linux Mint. Um, I didn't have any driver issues. Everything worked uh, upon installation. I didn't even need to tweak the NVIDIA driver with my uh, aftermarket GeForce. So, um, so yeah, I highly recommend switching to uh, Linux Mint on Pentium 4 systems. The performance isn't stellar, but it is comparable to XP. And um, it's not like you're going to be playing brand new games on this system anyways. Um, you can still play emulators by uh, using the Wine software. It's a very common Linux program that will allow you to use... Uh, Windows based emulators if you so choose if you want to continue using those um, or any of the older games that the system would be able to play anyways you could use wine to play them um, like I said this is the system's been far outclassed by new systems uh, when it comes to playing video games so uh, if that's your concern I mean this you're not going to be using this for for games anyways this is going to be an office computer, some light web browsing. Um, it's still set up very much like you would uh, expect a uh, Windows computer set up. So if you're new to Linux, it's easy to adopt. Uh, it's got a menu instead of the start menu, but it's very similar and all your programs are accessible through there. Um, there's a few things you can try if you want to just give it a shot and see how it runs on your system. Hop on over to the Linux Mint website. 
download the Mate desktop environment. I believe that the current iteration is uh, Linux Mint 14. If you're checking this video out later, get the newest. It might be 15 by then. But um, you can download the ISO image, which is basically just an image of the CD-ROM on your computer. That's the virtual CD-ROM for the operating system. And then download Linux Live CD or a USB flash drive creator. Um, it's abbreviated LILI. -li. Install that on your Windows PC. It can convert your uh, the image that you download, the CD image of the installed disk, it can convert it to a USB stick. Even this 11 year old computer can be booted from USB. So instead of having to burn the CD, which you can if you want, you can burn the CD, but you can also create a bootable USB version of the Linux operating system. And when you do that, you can, uh, it's, you don't even have to install it first, you can just stick it in, it will boot up inside of this interface. You can explore and see if this is something that you would like to switch to. I hope this has been informative and, and good luck with your old systems.